And now we're going to turn to a taxing issue for America, inversions. It's the practice where multinational firms move their corporate headquarters overseas to avoid paying U.S. taxes. It's legal via loophole in the U.S. tax system, and it's logical. The U.S. has one of the highest, if not the highest, corporate tax rates among developed countries. It puts American companies at a competitive disadvantage, it's argued. It's also very popular. Dozens of U.S. companies have reincorporated in low-tax countries since 82, including many pharmaceutical giants. But the question is, is it fair and is it right? Critics say it erodes the nation's tax base and places an unfair burden on other domestic companies. Some have gone so far as to accuse these companies of being unpatriotic and corporate deserters. But from a firm's perspective, it also has an obligation to its employees and shareholders to turn the biggest profit possible. Now, the practice, it has come under the lens recently and under fire, including from the president and many congressional Democrats. Following news of Burger King's plan to acquire Canadian coffee and donut chain Tim Hortons, the president himself criticized such companies for lacking, quote, economic patriotism. He went on to say that even corporate profits, even though they're as high as ever, a small but growing group of big corporations are fleeing the country to get out of paying taxes. They're keeping most of their business inside the United States, but they're basically renouncing their citizenship and declaring that they're based somewhere else just to avoid paying their fair share. Now, while the president asked Congress to act on the issue, he has also threatened to sidestep them if need be and act alone. And tonight, I want to bring in two guests on both sides of the issue. You have Ganny Feynman. He is a fellow at the Manhattan Institute for Policy Research and deputy director of the Center for Medical Progress. He's also co-author of the report, The Merits of a Territorial Tax System. And we're also joined by Daniel Shaviro. He's a Wayne Perry Professor of Taxation at NYU School of Law and as part of the Joint Committee on Taxation, Professor Shaviro, he worked extensively on the Tax Reform Act of 1986. He's written a number of books on tax and budget policy, including Fixing U.S. International Taxation, published earlier this year. Gentlemen, thank you both. I appreciate the time. Thanks for having me. Our pleasure. Well, well let me start with you, Daniel. Um, to what the president said, is he right? that these companies are being unpatriotic? Well, political rhetoric is always a little different than the way like academics will talk about the issues. If you want to say it's a bad thing politically, I guess saying it's unpatriotic is the right way to put it. Uh, I'm not a politician. I wouldn't put it that way, and I can understand that the companies are trying to save taxes to their shareholders and such. But I think the question of interest is, is it bad for the U.S., and should we do something about it to stop it from happening? So you could don't have to think these are evil people in order to think that we need rules to stop it from happening. That depends on the effects on our national welfare that it has, which is quite a different question, of course. Well, Daniel, is there is there a compact unwritten, albeit that if you're a corporation in America and you enjoy the benefits uh, from a safety, security, infrastructure standpoint of being an American company and you continue to retain a large core of your company here, you owe something back to your country and that includes taxes. Ooh. Well, that's something I think that the companies and their and their leadership and their uh, lawyers who work for them and all those people should ask themselves. But I think for the U.S. people and the U.S. Congress is, do you want to have rules that let them strip their earnings out of the U.S. tax base? Now, whether or not there's anything wrong with the company stripping its earnings out of the U.S. tax base, if it's able to do that, uh, it sort of doesn't make sense to let them do it. And inversions is kind of indirectly related to that whole uh, problem. And I'll ask you the same question, Evgeny, because you've heard some of the rhetoric. Um, to that end, is there any bare minimum other than first and foremost to the shareholder that a company has to, the, to affect the, the nation uh, that it was born in? Does it owe anything back, these corporations, to the U.S., or is their first priority to avoid paying whatever taxes they can legally get away with? Well, I think firms have an obligation to pay the tax that they're legally required to pay. Um, no more, no less. And, uh, you know, whether you view this as, uh, as something unfortunate or something good, in a globalized world, there's a lot of tax competitiveness. Countries offer lower tax jurisdictions. They offer better tax rules than the U.S. does. And corporations will restructure to move to those jurisdictions. Um, 
that's simply a decision on the part of the corporation. As long as they're not trying to evade the taxes they owe on their U.S. earned income, I don't see a problem with it. The uh, bigger problem I see is with the worldwide tax system that the U.S. imposes. Uh, inversions are a symptom of that system. They're well, not the underlying issue. Okay, but let me get to the question of motivations. Because I've heard two different uh, schools of thought on this, Yevgeny. Some say, hey, we do this because from a competitive standpoint or from a fairness standpoint, we can't play on an international uh, playing field unless we do it. But others turn around and say, time out here. All you're trying to do um, is not only put some money in your pocket, but you're going to use that money uh, to pay out maybe in the form of dividends to jack up your stock price. Is it that they can't compete or, hey, this is a way to save a buck and we'll do whatever we can? So it, it really depends on the company. Uh, some companies are, sure, are obviously just trying to save some money, but by doing so, whatever, their co whatever country they're in, they do increase the capital stock. If a U.S.-based company uh, becomes foreign and then they can repatriate money into the U.S. without paying taxes, that's going to increase the U.S. capital stock. Um, paying out dividends is one way of doing that. Uh, I think increasing the capital stock is a good thing. Uh, you can disagree about that. Um, it might have negative effects on revenues, but that's a discussion we should be having. I, I don't really think the motives are a big problem here. Even if they're doing it just to reduce their taxes, that's what they should be doing. That's what anyone does as a citizen when I file taxes. I do everything I can to try to reduce the amount of taxes I pay through whatever legal means are available. I'm saying there are differences between companies. I've been told by U.S. Com people in U.S. companies that the Japanese companies uh, just don't do as much tax planning as they can because they either think it's wrong or that they'll get in trouble. But I, I do agree with Richard that if like half the U.S. companies are doing it, say that the other half would kind of think they're stupid not to do the same thing. So that's why I think rather than being a morality play, it really is a question about what sorts of rules we want to have and what sorts of incentives we want the companies to have. Talk about some of the consequences, Daniel, if you could. There was a, a Times piece um, on the very subject. If corporations can continue to evade taxation using strategies like sham transactions between phantom subsidiaries to try and shift profits to the lowest tax jurisdictions and costs to where taxes are highest, the burden of public finance will almost, almost entirely fall on the shoulders of ordinary workers, the only link in this economic chain that can't move. Are we already starting to see states, and I guess even on, the, on a broader level, uh, on a federal tax base here, that, hey, if the revenues aren't coming in, it's got to come from somewhere, and maybe services are going to be cut as a consequence. How much of a hit will this really cost at the end of the day? Well, there are different revenue estimates, and I think fundamentally the attempt to do some of inversions is kind of a band-aid pending broader reform. But there are two things I'd say here. One is there genuinely is economic pressure in that direction, and we kind of can't do a whole lot to call it off. On the other hand, at the margin, uh, our rules make it awfully easy for companies to do this, and uh, we don't really need to make it that easy. And by do this, I'd say there are two things going on here. One is companies have foreign earnings that they knew perfectly well they'd have to repatriate someday and pay tax on, even if they told their accountants otherwise. And now they want to kind of get out of it in midstream. The other is they want to have fun stripping earnings out of the U.S. tax base. Now, Anti-inversion rules only stop U.S. companies from doing it. They don't actually stop foreign companies from doing it. But it is something, again, I, I don't see it as a morality play. But uh, if we have uh, the tax system here, we want to tax domestic source income, it's kind of silly to let companies get out of it by playing these games. And how about on your end, Yevgeny? Do you see uh, that we we got to do something because the status quo you know, you're just going to see more and more folks do this, and there's going to be a net consequence uh, to the, at the end of the day to the tax base, and you're going to find the governor screaming bloody murder at a certain point. Sure. Uh, the Joint Committee on Taxation actually did analyze uh, what the effect of a growing number of inversions would be over the next decade on revenues. They said it would strip out, uh, strip out about $20 billion uh, in revenues over, uh, over 10 years. That's less than a percentage point of total corporate tax revenues that we expect to accrue over those years. Now, these models are imperfect. It's a static model. It doesn't take into account other economic effects. So if there's an increased capital stock, like I mentioned before, uh, some of that would be offset. Um, I, I, I think ultimately uh, it, it is a Band-Aid, um, and it's a poor Band-Aid. It's a case where uh, you're, you're trying to treat the disease, and by, by putting this Band-Aid on, you might push off actually uh, having real tax reform. Uh, the, the bill that's been proposed by Democrats, um, it, they, they know that it has no chance of passing. They know that Republicans won't support it. Uh, the rules issued by Treasury, some of them I actually agree with. but. 
to try to pitch this as uh, as actual reform and with, without addressing the underlying problems in our tax code, I think that's a huge mistake. You don't want to take your eyes off the ball, which is actually reforming the tax code as a whole. Daniel, what is the best way to address this, whether it's comprehensive or not? What's the root of it? So at least you say, come on, you know, don't go to Canada, don't go to Ireland, don't go wherever else. There's got to be a better way than the way we're doing it now. Well, I don't want to get too wonky about this, uh, but there are two parts of it. One is that the companies, the U.S. companies have foreign earnings. They always knew they were supposed to be taxing them someday, and now they want to get out of midstream. I see no reason, including of economic incentives, not to say uh, you can't get out from the stud of foreign source earnings that you were supposed to pay tax on in the future just by inverting. The second thing is that companies, of course, have an incentive, all companies, to have report income is foreign source, not U.S. source, if the other country has a lower rate. And uh, you kind of need better source rules. And I do think that the U.S. tax system has to recognize that it's very hard to tax capital income at a high rate in a global environment. No, we don't actually do that now. Sure, the rate is 35 uh, percent, but companies pay an effective rate that's far lower. Of course, we do have a rather stupid way of getting to that end result. I personally don't think anything significant is going to happen anytime soon. All right, this is debate we're going to keep having, um, and I want your take on this. Um, go over to Facebook and Twitter and answer a question. American companies moving overseas to avoid taxes. Is it good business or is it corporate unpatriotism, if that's a word? When we come back, a local high school football player loses his life after a rough game on the field. Authorities say he, the third school player in the country, to die um, just this season playing football. Will parents start pulling their kids off the field? We'll debate that at the table right after this.